What do you remember about the Bugs game? <laughs> Brilliant in the seventh. Pestered in the eighth. Those Bugs have really caused him a little bit of a problem here. I remember trying to pitch and having bugs everywhere. Yeah, at least now if they happen, I know how to take care of them. They could have told me that 10 years ago and I'd be. He was kind of like a Greek god with how he had come up and just taken the eighth inning by storm, setting up for the best closer in the game and Mariano Rivera. And to see him kind of flustered, you felt that was the opening. A four pitch walk. Tying run on in the eighth. Maybe this is our night. Maybe we're going to be able to to kind of push through here a little bit, get momentum back in our side. When it was mentioned, like, is there bug spray or anything like that? And they told us in our dugout not to use it. In the Yankee dugout, I know they were like constantly using bug spray, even bringing the bug spray out for Java. And, you know, that just, that just made it worse. October 5th of 2007 had really interesting weather because it was much warmer than normal. We had a high of 85 at Cleveland Hopkins Airport, which is very warm for that time of the year. At the time, I lived in Bretnaw, so I lived closer, I lived on the water. I knew those bugs were around, not thinking it was going to affect the game that night. The whole day was just one of those, you know, steamy October nights that you just never anticipate, especially in Cleveland. It's always nice to play in warm weather, so it was such a, it was such a nice, unseasonably warm time for October. The, the atmosphere in the playoffs is so so much different. Uh, you know, you got to really work a little bit harder to focus. You know, outside of that, it was just about uh, you know trying to go up 2-0. We didn't notice anything, bugs or anything like that. I don't think they started until later in the game, but. It was my first time in the playoffs, so you, you obviously just kind of notice uh, the intensity of the fans, and um, you're playing the New York Yankees at home, so it's an awesome atmosphere. You know, you've got the game taking place the way that it is. Like I said, both people are, are, are getting people out. Uh, nobody's really taking over the game. You're, you're, you're waiting for that inning. Well, Fausto, I thought, was dominant. Jeter will sit down in the first. Yeah, he has that power sinker, and uh, you know, it's a heavy baseball, and he put their offense on defense. You know, he threw it right at him, and, and, uh, and you know that was what we wanted to do, and that's what he did. He's been in such a great place all year long, and that game being his first playoff uh, appearance, you know, there's obviously some nerves and some question marks, maybe as to how he's going to handle it. And I just thought his composure, you know, was really good. What we wanted to do was try and force them to beat us the other way, and if they did, hey, you tip your cap and you move on. But we didn't want to play into their strength of being able to pull the ball. And you kind of saw where Fausto really established early on. He was going hard in or starting that bowling ball sinker down the middle and then letting it just bury in on the right-handers. And that kind of gave us a roadmap. Probably one of the best pitching performances you'll see out of a young guy and out of Fausto. Swing and a base is Due to that lineup, you know, in that spot, they were desperate. They were, they were down a game. Um, they played all their lefties. Uh, what he did on that stage was, I think this game, really looking back, and it's all about him and that the performance he put up. This is a typical October postseason pitching performance from Andy Pettit and Fausto Carmona. Now, this is more what you expect in postseason baseball, 90-foot wars. Every base is so important, moving runners up, getting runners over. I mean, Andy Pettit is, you know, one of the better postseason uh, pitchers in history, so uh, he's very tough, like you said. I mean, I think we had some hits and we had opportunities to score, but once you get runners in scoring position, those elite pitchers have a, a good way to, to pitch through those and make pitches. And Two men out. Uh, certainly, Andy was that guy. I mean, it's, he's a very tough at bat for a left handed pitcher as well. And Pettit's just a competitor, you know, he knows how to pitch, uh, savvy. I mean, um, you know, recognize the swings, recognize the weaknesses. It was a good back and forth. A lot of us did not have that playoff experience. And you look at that Yankee roster, and it was the opposite. It was that, you know, that the, the dynasty, all those guys just lined up one after another, including Andy. Um, I always thought he was such a tough lefty to face. The guys are getting on base, but he's limiting the damage. And Five times in this game, the Indians have had a leadoff man on. They have yet to score. Just about the time the lake breeze relaxes and those southwest winds take over, there's a short period where the winds will go dead calm. And you could tell that that was taking place because there was a light haze that kind of developed in progressive field. I feel like we had played with midges before, but nothing even close to the level that it was in that particular game. But the people in the stands are kind of waving their, 
you know, their papers in front of them. But you can tell it was like they had just migrated to the infield itself, it seems like, and that's just where they did their business. You gotta notice a couple, then all of a sudden they're they're on your arms, and then all, anywhere you're kind of sweating, they're kind of sticking to you. We just kind of all started looking at each other like, this can't really be happening. So I kind of looked at it in my head, in my mind, that this was pretty much just a heavy rain you had to play in. You know, they're in your eyes, which obviously as a baseball player is a super uncomfortable feeling. We were all standing in the bullpen because there was no activity out by us. There was no swarms, there was nothing going on. So, you know, for a while there, we just felt like, okay, you know, it's, it, you know, there's some bees or, there, or there's something that's going on here. You have to go back to what Carmona said before the start of this series. I'm not intimidated by the Yankees. I'm not intimidated by the, by the names on the back of the jerseys. Lots of buds flying around tonight, and you see you know, umpires and players in the field trying to fan them away from their face. There's a picture in, in the clubhouse in, in uh, Goodyear, Fausto peering in for the sign with uh, literally thousands of midges around his face, and, and I'd never seen focus like that before. It's really impressive. I think our, our whole team really took a cue from, from Fausto, and that when Fausto didn't let him affect him, we kind of just were, we're going to say, hey, if it, it's not going to affect any of us. The work ethic of that team and, and the way Eric was, it, it just not making excuses. And... Hard hit ball to second. No trouble as Dribble Cabrera. You know, one thing I knew we always, you know, were better than most was, was our toughness. It goes right along with your focus. Just when you think, guys, you've seen everything you can see in a Major League Baseball game, check it out. You could see it was having an effect on Jopper. I don't know how it could. They were that bad, but as an umpire, you know, what do you do? Do you stop a game because of bugs? Well, you always wonder if the, the opposing manager is going to come out and, you know, try to make an argument with the umpire, uh, especially when it looked like we had the edge, which we did with Fosco and how he handled it. Uh, but that never happened. But uh, that thought did cross my mind. We decided to continue on playing, just hopefully thinking that eventually the wind, uh, something will just push them off and, and, and we'll just have baseball. Rule 101 of midge fighting in Northeast Ohio. You don't put bug spray on because that's sticky and then the little midges will stick to you. I don't want to say it was funny because it's certainly not. I mean, we all respect how hard the game is. It, it was almost like it was fate. And it's almost like, you know, you know, hey, what's going on here? You could tell it was most definitely affecting them. You know, then you had, uh, you know, Jeter, I think a Rod or somebody else came in there and. You know, they're talking to them about it, and you know, you can see it starting to affect them. You're just thinking, like, find any way you can to get to get the run in. Chamberlain threw me first pitch fastball, and I hot shot right at Minkiewicz. Wow, what a rope! Hit it about as hard as I could, and it was right to Minkiewicz at first base. And you're like, oh man, this kind of had one of those feels like, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to score. So the Indians won for 13 now with runners in scoring position. And again, it's up to Victor Martinez. I think all of us like down the line, like we're just not gonna let this moment and we're not gonna let we're not gonna let this beat us. What a pitch! Here comes Sizemore! Friendly bounce! Not in time in time! And you gotta give Grady Sizemore a ton of credit because that ball got to the backstop and Posada was really quick. And then the football days from G-Size just took over because it was a, wasn't a form tackle, but if he slid with his legs out and it kind of took out Chamberlain. So that changed everything. When we saw that we drew blood against Chamberlain at that point, we felt we had a really good shot because Fausto was rolling. He got it! You know, watching Jabba, yeah, there was concern that, holy cow, I hope these things kind of get away before Fausto goes back out, but wow, he just stepped so above. And now it's his turn to battle the insects. I was even more amazed by Fausto. The guy didn't even budge. I mean, he didn't blink out there. I mean, to the point where he even, when he came off the field, he wasn't even wiping him off his neck. I mean, I had to tell the trainer, I said, listen, go down there and wipe his neck, man. So you talk about being in the zone, man. I mean, that was, uh, that was impressive. And uh, trust me, both sides saw it too. Kind of the image that gets planted in my head is like Fosco looking in in like these intense moments pitching and just bugs everywhere. And he's not rattled in the least. Like his concentration in that moment was incredible. I felt like if Fosco can pitch through it, so can Chamberlain, but he act like it was in the earth thing that he couldn't do. And he was just, again, rookie little pitcher. And I felt like, okay, this rookie, you know, he you know he can't deal with this pressure. And I think that's what happened. We got 40,000 plus of the Jake that are just out of their minds because we finally broke through. We had to kind of pull the emotion back in 
We're not going to lose a game where Fausto goes nine innings, going to find a way to win that game for Fausto. We just had so many missed opportunities earlier in the game. But I felt like if we did get an extra innings, we'll have the advantage, obviously, just because we're the home team. At that point, it was my job to get on base. And that was my thought process, was to try to do whatever you can. And he's got a chance. A four-pitch walk in the 11th inning. I always say, a man on base, anything can happen. You know, Hafner have been great for us all year, but he was a tad off about this point in time. Now they're loaded with two outs. And for the fourth time in as many at-bats, Travis Hafner, a chance to win the game. With him having the opportunity to get up there, it was his time. You know, it was, you know, you know, he was due to get a hit. Uh, he needed to get a big hit for us. He's going to be the hero. He's going to be the guy to step up there and get it done. You know, you go up there thinking like, okay, just hit something hard. You know, let's let's win this game. It was a full count pitch. You knew it was going to be do or die. Kind of one of those situations you play out in, in the movies. And this crowd will tell you the story. You're thinking he's going to throw a fastball, but you know, he threw a change up, left it up a little bit, kind of able to stay back enough to hit a line drive into right center. And I think when I hit it, I kind of jumped a little bit in the box and then realized like, hey, I better make it to first base here really quick before they throw me out. But I think three of their players were making more than our entire team, if I remember right. You know, for us to, to, to win and then win in Yankee Stadium, you know, it could be rain, snow, bugs, bees, you know, I don't really care. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you could never shut it down mentally, ever. It was a really intense game, those 11 innings, and to get that hit was uh, pretty special, something I'll always remember, and just see the crowd going crazy and your teammates come out and, you know, dog pile on you was a, a special moment. Then our ability to, to rise above that adversity, if you will, the adversity of the midges, the adversity of the bugs, and our ability to handle that, and on the flip side, the Yankees, you know, seem to to struggle with it. That game proved to ourselves, hey, we're not only as good as they are, we're as tough as they are.